Not nobody do you not me now. We stay far out of trouble. Come on, I'm off to stay in England and you say you did. And instead, I'm in stay in Jamaica, you say. I'm killing me. Now sometimes I wonder why. What could I do? That's them killing me. I don't know, sometimes I just want to just see the loss. While the murder team continue investigating Kavon's killing, other Trident teams attempt to prevent future murders. They target well-known criminals involved with drugs and guns. John Coles heads Trident's team of 350 men and women. He believes preventing shootings is the only way forward. If we can get intelligence that an individual has a gun, is actively drug dealing, is actively engaged in supplying guns, then we will target them with a view to taking them out. And we take them out for any offence we can get them for. The idea is to get him off the streets, because if he's off the streets, he can't shoot anybody. In three years, Trident has seized 450 guns and 7,000 rounds of ammunition. They've found 960 kilos of drugs and over 800,000 pounds in cash. They have two proactive teams that target key criminals, trying to stop the flow of drugs and guns. Trevor Gardner has worked on Trident's South London proactive team since it began five years ago. I'd like to think from the community's point of view that we are doing them some good, that we are taking guns and we're taking drugs off the streets. Lots and lots of people think it's cool and it's a groovy thing to carry a gun, but in my view, it, you only carry a gun for one purpose and that's to use it. All they do is um, bring misery to, to other people's families, loved ones, and ultimately to the person that pulls the trigger. Trevor Gardner's team is working on their biggest case yet. 45-year-old Owen Clark was head of a huge drugs empire running cocaine from Jamaica to the UK. Trident reckoned he cleared nearly a million pounds a year. He treated himself to designer clothes, diamond jewellery and expensive cars. Women flocked to him. They may not have known where his money came from. Trident watched his empire for three years. Clark kept a distance from the drug dealing, but the team arrested so many of his employees, they forced Clark to take a more direct role. As he became more active, their surveillance intensified. They needed to arrest him red-handed. Oh, we, we did hours and hours of surveillance. We just followed him for 30 odd days, for anywhere up to 18 hours a day. Um, from when he got up uh, out of bed in the morning to when he went to bed at night. Clark was regularly seen with Jason Sadler, his top henchman. They were spotted with another man exchanging a bag for a brown envelope. Trident believed the bag contained cash, payment for an envelope of drugs which Sadler now had. While this went on, Trevor Gardner's team were waiting at a flat Clark used. To take him off the streets, they needed to catch him in actual possession of drugs. At this point, as Owen Clark's walking in, myself and the rest of the guys from the team were actually hiding in the ground floor um, stairwell. In, in, uses a key. Waiting for all parties to go in, and then we were going to hopefully um, surprise them. Yeah, it's definitely the same male with the headband. Wait, wait, wait. He's out, out towards his dress, using a mobile and carrying a large brown envelope. Within probably about five or ten minutes, Jason Sadler joins him and he's still carrying the, the brown envelope. He, he was buzzed in and he then goes up to the top floor um, and we're still waiting. In, in and upstairs, upstairs. Like we waited for about ten minutes um, until we thought it was the right time to go in, um, and then we, we um, forced entry to the door. And um, in the kitchen, we found them. And um, we've gone into the kitchen, 
Clark was actually on the worktop trying to climb out the window. Um, bear in mind, it's the third floor window. I don't think he particularly cared at that point. He just wanted to get away. Could have gone horribly wrong, but he was finally brought back into the window and handcuffed. Yeah, it hit me in my head, didn't it? You banged your head, did you? I got a hit in my head. Okay, what's your name? Owen. Clark. What's your surname? Owen Clark. Okay. On the little kitchen table was a um, large packet of crack cocaine. After three and a half years of painstaking investigation, they caught Clark and Sadler red-handed manufacturing crack cocaine. And it was quite a tense moment, but it was also the exhilaration of the three and a half years' work. But it was a judgment call and the correct one, and, um, and we got the jackpot. The floor is one man. Sadler pleaded guilty to supplying you crack and was sentenced to five years. Had been arrested for conspiracy to supply Class A cocaine. Clark's lucrative drugs business was over. He was found guilty and sentenced to 13 years. With Clark safely inside, gun crime in London fell. But Trevor Gardner isn't prepared to leave it there. He believes Clark earned a massive amount from his illegal trade. Clark was rarely seen without his diamond-encrusted bling. After his arrest, Trident seized all they could find. This is um, Owen Clark's jewellery. He says they were gifts and he disputes the valuation. But you, you feel the weight. I mean, that is good, good quality jewellery that's been well made. Just those three items, have, I think, were valued in sort of the region of about ten or twelve thousand pounds. So it is big, big money. It is big money. They had his jewellery, but wanted his money. Trident's money laundering expert Alan Johnston was called in. Quite often, the motivating factor behind the kind of shootings that Trident deals with is actually money. And if we can, yes, we will take the shirt off their back. Um, and hopefully, we'll take some of the glamour out of crime. Because you don't look too glamorous a criminal when you're driving around in a beat up car with clothes that you've maybe got out of a charity shop or uh, last year's fashions or whatever else. So the idea is we will take the profits out of crime. And we will take a shot off her back if we can. No drug dealer can be allowed to profit um, from drug dealing. We've got to track down, find their money, and retrieve it. They shouldn't be, just sit in, sit in prison, do their time, and then, then come out again with hundreds, millions of pounds. Who knows? It's, it's got to be done to make other drug dealers see that we're not just going to put them in prison, we're also going to take their money from them. Um, I think that hurts the criminals more than doing their time. Tracing illegal cash is an international money puzzle. It will be months before they know how much Clark is worth. While one Trident team go after Clark's money, the murder team are nine days into the case of Kevon Forsyth's killing. The man suspected of ordering the two gunmen to shoot has not been found but Brixton police give Trident a video of him that may be useful evidence. It was found in a house search six months earlier. Part of the footage in here so it shows the suspect full on, face to camera, pulling an a, um, automatic firearm out of his waistband, removing the clip and demonstrating that it's loaded. I couldn't hope for a better picture of a suspect. I mean, he's, he's stood there and been filmed holding it. Right, I've just got a uh, tear, tear on the end. <laughs> Bamo, you can't catch my lease. So like, no, you get me one the Obviously. Obviously, fine, Bamo. Get me mm. clips off. Uh, Done all. <laughs> that ain't fucking around. All too frequently, um, we come across individuals who will uh, take videos of themselves um, with firearms uh, and also take pictures, still pictures, and I've seen it ranging from one gun to three or four guns and even uh, a machine gun. The video clip shows the suspect who we believe is involved and implicated uh, in the murder of Kevon, um, but we believe he may well not be um, the actual gunman. While it may be evidence that the suspect has access to guns, it isn't proof of his involvement in Kevon's murder. <laughs> Trevor Gardner's team have researched Owen Clark's assets in the UK. In London, they've found two houses he owns worth half a million pounds. 
but the paper trail is leading to Clark's home country, Jamaica, where he may have more property.